and uh, hurls it. So yeah, a lot of action. Both of us are deep in action here for uh, for uh, story wise. Yeah, that's 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 the value that you got to deliver on. <laughs> You know, and you don't see enough. I, I'm flipping through comics. I'm not seeing it. Right. People, you know, people of today, creators, where's the action? Where's the, you know, blow by blow action sequences? We are live. Welcome to Making the Turbo Pit Fighter comic. Where two guys actually get together and make a comic book. Not only talk about how to make a comic book, but actually make a comic book. I'm Kurt Bruegel. How you doing today, Jake? Uh, I'm great. I'm, I'm a little behind, so thanks for waiting up for me. But I'm ready. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, I was actually up late doing some comic. Um, and uh, I'll show you my uh, progress from last night. But... Um, you know, summer's off now for, for teachers. And so we get a couple extra hours here and there. Good, good. Yeah. You have the solid Fridays off now, huh? Yeah. It's a, just a question of what else do I have to do on those days? But yeah, fr- my, I don't have to teach on Fridays and my, uh, my school hours are very, um, uh, they're only eight to twelve, so if I can get if I can get out of the building, I can get home by like one. And um, again, it, you know, what else do I have to do besides right. uh, sit here and do comics? Well, it's, it's kind of a it's kind of a treat for me to uh, have extra time. You know, the, the, these last uh, pandemic years have been really brutal on teachers. Oh, I bet because we've we've been having to. At first, we had to do all of our uh, curriculum online, mm-hmm. and like we had to convert everything, which takes forever. And then we had to, um, you know, this past year, we just had to uh, do a lot of coverages and deal with a lot of exigencies uh, in schools that take away all of your prep periods and take away, you know, all the time you're counting on so that you have to stay late or come in early in order to get your job done and this last year was you you might see a lot of teachers in your local area quitting or retiring (laughs) early uh yeah we're already seeing that already seeing that around yeah (laughs) around the country but um yeah so let the robots let uh, the robots teach the kids that's what i say it's gonna be it's 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 eventual right no, actually, uh, it, it's it's uh, it's gone backwards. That's what a lot of people thought until the pandemic. When the pandemic right. came, they they tried all of this like uh, different online technology and right. you know, and Khan Academy and teaching kids like you know from package videos and stuff. And the kids responded terribly, and the and that the, the uh, parents hate it. Mm-hmm. So. You know, now there's a big push to hire as many teachers as possible to try to replace all the teachers that left. Then pay them. Pay them some actual living wages and give them a budget. Yeah, I know. So around the country, they, uh, you know, teachers, some, you know, Texas teachers only make 30K. Yeah. Ridiculous. Good yeah. And Arizona, it's really, it's, I mean, you know, the cost of living is low, yeah. but it, do, it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't, like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So where are you at? Are you, did you finish page uh, five and you're on page yeah. six? Yeah. So I, I finished page five. So here's nice, uh, nice. Page, page one. Um, and again, these page numbers are subject to change because I think, you know, this is the beginning of, of uh, issue two and it just kind of starts on these panels and this explosion. Right. But uh, I'm wondering if, if since this is a flashback scene, if we're going to let that sit like that, we might change this and put this sequence in in a few pages. So that's still being uh, considered. But um, we get to, uh, you know, the farm, we get to the uh, inside the um, the protected zone and then we get to the pharmacy here and then we get to the meeting with the 
pharmacist parents who are uh, inventors, and this guy is actually the inventor of this gun, which we didn't we didn't find out yet about. We just call it the package. His daughter is the uh, beautiful Embra, and they frisky have their, Embra, uh, <laughs> frisky Embra, and they have their uh, their encounter, and that leads to the uh, the the uh, wake up call for Turbo, and they're in the uh, van. Now, I, I haven't filled in some of these backgrounds yet. Um, I might I might do that today, but um, they wake up, and then this is where they uh, left off from issue one, which means we can't really start the, we can't really do a sequence, a nowadays sequence before page one. So I might do like a splash page before page one, or else we'll just start on that uh, page that we have. Um, so yeah, here they're being pursued. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, we've, we've often mentioned in past episodes about um, maybe resequencing all the little parts, because the parts you have are about two to three pages. So you move us through the story about, you know, two, three pages, unless it's a, a high impact uh, action scene, which is where you're going to right now with the uh, the marauding yep. berserker bikers uh, after uh, yes. them in the uh, ice cream truck. Right. There's definitely uh, the action scene is what what we're starting to to really get into now. Right. Um, the mar- marauding uh, berserkers are uh, are uh, in hot pursuit. They release the uh, the mace chains and then. That takes out, um, this is what we were working on last episode, takes out uh, one tire and then uh, a couple other tires. And um, then we see it causes a couple of explosions and it really reduces the force uh, that's of, uh, of people tailing them. But uh, two of these uh, jokers uh, get up on the back of the van. Right. And... And, I th- and and then it's going to be even more than two. Um, but yeah, let, so let's go over what we did last time. Uh, that took out a few, but still plenty more of them. They multiply like rats. You notice that I'm putting the uh, actual um, lettering in this time. Yeah. Um, because I don't know how I did it last time, but I did empty balloons, and I'm not sure how I kept track of everything. I had it right. all separate. But, right. Um, they're on the roof. What are we going to do? Um, I'll deal with them. And so uh, the guy has a hammer, a claw hammer, some kind of claw thing going right through the roof. And then we still hear the the uh, sound effects clump. But you're going to have to take out their wheels. Me? And here you can see I'm just <laughs> making these kind of things pop out in front. Uh, how am I going to do that? Some of these uh, little balloon tails aren't clear. As I'm seeing these things, um, these are called tumble wires. You just drop them in front of the bike's wheels when they get close. Got it? And she's showing her these little metal uh, egg-looking things. And then we come to page six. Um, page six here. So far, it's uh, she'll say, uh, "What are what the hell are these?" and uh, Turbo's like uh, a mess of wires that uncoil on contact. This will take them down. But what have I missed? So throw two at a time, about six feet ahead of them. Got it? This is insane. And then there's like another crunk up on the uh, ceiling. <laughs> this this is insane. I'm not ready for this. You're all we got at this point. Now get to the side door before they dot, dot, dot. And then now uh, we're see here. Hello, lady. <laughs> he's upside down. Crash, <laughs> yeah, he crashes through the window. And so there's going to be lots of glass everywhere. And this is uh, like looking in the, the front of the van. We have the robot driver, Goofer. And uh, Turbo's here. And this... Uh, this guy's coming in, and there's going to be tons of blo- broken glass everywhere. It's going to say Krish, and then she's going E, and then <laughs> Turbo's going to be saying, checks notes, 
Um, you r- rotten low life scum or something. Let's see. Why you? It's gonna be yeah. It's right here. Um. Yeah, she doesn't take kindly. You rotten scum. Unless you have anything better. <laughs> uh, nice, nice. Yeah, you rot and scum. That's how we all feel sometimes. <laughs> um, and uh, in the bottom panel here, which is blank right now, she is going to lay a haymaker so hard on this guy that he... Uh, He's just like gonna be out of the picture. <laughs> oh, so um, so yeah. So I'm just gonna tighten this one up. I'm gonna start tightening this one up and uh, fill in a couple of um word balloons. But yeah, this is the scene we're on here, and then I'm um, just getting into uh, the next like story immediate uh, pages here. Um. Um, yeah, so they're going to, they're going to jump in a couple more of them going to jump in, you know, I think I have four of them going to jump in to the cab and, uh, duke it out. And, and then she's going to jump, they're going to, uh, right. So here, I don't know. These are just like, really, let me get closer. These are, oops, these are really, um, rough thumbnails and I advise this for all my students before you do a page do it in thumbnail and then do like an eight and a half eleven like bigger sketchy version and then do your pencils it'll really help but um they're gonna try to choke her she's gonna flip a guy then she's going to lean out the window and uh finish off a guy I think they take out the robot, right? And then uh, Trophy's got to take the wheel. Then they're on real, on, on the next page, they're going to be on real shaky mountain pass with like the van up on two wheels and stuff. And then uh, the Trophy Girl finally figures out how to drop the uh, little eggs and takes out all the bikers, the bikes that are in pursuit, which will be like, let's say two or maybe three. And a fire starts. Oh yeah, so one of them throws like a little firebomb in the in the car, and so Turbo on the next page is gonna reach up, grab one of their bodies, <laughs> and just start putting out the fire with the guy's body, <laughs> and uh, then then throw him out uh, the the van, and then uh, here we're gonna see uh, only four left. The road is rough. Um, so they're going to stop the van, and sh- on her signal, she gets out. She uh, surprises them, you know, jumps out the back and uh, takes two guys right off their bikes at the same time. Um, then we're down to two guys right here. Uh, one of them has a crossbow and will wing her. Um, but uh, she's going to jump up on the top of the in and um, jump down and garrot him with uh, with one of the mace chains um, and that'll be it so that this is gonna be six page uh, up that brings us up to page 12 nice. and then and then they're going to be uh, having a brief respite um, and again she um, trophy girl is going to be nursing her wounds which uh, brings them closer each time, you know, and that brings Turbo back to flashbacks every time she gets, like, touched or something. Um, But they are going to uh, look in the binoculars, and they're going to see all the way down this big mountain pass, uh, the little village territory or the township or whatever that Mr. Ike's shop is in. And even though the, uh, the truck is disabled severely, they're just going to be able to coast downhill uh, in that direction. And then we're, she's going to say, uh, just keep moving. We're safe as long as we keep moving. 
And uh, she's going to be like, you have blood in your face. And she starts to dab it. And that's when Turbo will go back to flashback. And she'll go back to the scene with Embra. Okay. Nice. <sighs> Woo! Yeah. All okay. right. So I'm in, uh, I'm on page 12, inking mode. Um, this is page, just a part of page 11, which I finished up this week. But just a real quick uh overview and if you want to chime in go ahead this is where um you know turbo has uh, found out that the the um the pit fights are rigged they've killed the uh the proprietor of this uh pit um and these guys are now trying to take her out so she dives and this is like behind the bar this is a really wild perspective um yeah so and then Goes back out to the uh, uh, the arena, and I guess people are just getting uh, mowed down. And then uh, Trophy Girl is being hauled away. And then, boom! Nice wrestling move, Turbo from mm -hmm. the from the top ropes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then. Uh, Take, I mean, that's a great, this is a great, like, just, like, uh, choke, bam, and then smashes the helmet. And then, mm -hmm. and then, of course, you know, my, uh, my uh, ink, well, the pencils you gave me, you know, on the scans, they're really, it's kind of tough, but I was like, oh, just about to start, you know, blacking that whole, in. and then I went, wait a second, there's a dude's face in there, there's like a nose and mm -hmm. some teeth. So I was like, all right, let's pull back. Let's see what's going on. And then, of course, um, the container that has Trophy Girl in it smashes. Um, and then uh, they're still blazing. She's behind the bar again. She, then she got the rifle from the guy she took down, smashed the helmet. And then this, is, this made me laugh so much. Um, so she's, you know, now she's like firing the gun at him. But um, Skybong, <laughs> Skybong Liquor, the king, 160 proof, these tanks. Um, so sweet, right. uh, sweet close up of her, gun barrel smoking. She's taking fire. Trophy girl's getting hauled away. Of course, radioactive uh, uh, stuff there and everything. Uh yeah, the pellets, and then um, I'll be heading towards. She takes one of the canisters of Skybong liquor and uh, hurls it. So yeah, a lot of action. Both of us are deep in action here for uh, for uh, story wise. Yeah, that's 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 the value that you got to deliver on. And, <laughs> you know, and you don't see enough. I, I'm flipping through comics. I'm not seeing it. Right. People, you know. People of today, creators, where's the action? Where's the, you know, blow by blow action sequences? So and, uh, I have another book to share. I, last episode, I think, is with the one I had shared, um, uh, Feral Star. But it speaks to just what you were speaking to and also on two color printing. So oh, here we this go. Is, Duo to yeah, yeah. Like this it. is a Mean Girls Club. It's called Pink Dawn. It's by this guy Ryan Heshka. Um, and this is No Brow uh, Publishing. Pretty sure it's his. I follow him on Instagram. Um, I really dig the style, the the, the retro uh, vintage. But um, he's got it nailed with the the action. Um, it's it's actually yeah. to the point where I had done a. a quick read last night i'm gonna actually sit down tonight and do a solid read um but it's uh um it's great i mean it's it's simple on some levels but i have to say this second color to the black and white is storytelling you know here's yeah the, here's the mean girls and it's great because it's sweets wanda wendy pinky blackie and uh it looks like a McClude. Um so uh so and they all have sort of a ethnic vibe. Um but are, it's are they what are they, a crime fighting team or something? No, they're just mean girls. 
and they have a clubhouse. So it's like it's they're not they're they're the your your typical anti heroes, but the local cops are getting tired, I guess, of their shenanigans, and uh, are gonna bust up their clubhouse, and so it just turns into a big old big old fight. So it's a what kind of shenanigans? What are they doing? I haven't read anything yet, so I don't know how they sit. I just like I spent about a half an hour kind of just flipping through. Um, I don't want to give too much away because I really want people to go and get a copy because you know this is a one of our fellow small press um, people. There was a page in here. So I'm picking up a I'm picking up an aesthetic of like morticia or elvira or kind of like uh screen like uh demonic screen queen uh you know ladies yeah, or, yeah. Uh, yeah. with the L- lily monster maybe no i mean oh, yeah. i i always like lily monster better than morticia but uh you know just uh draped in black a very gothic well the uh, vampira right right she, right vampira you know, she, uh, was a trail of there was one Man, I should have markered it off. But he had drawn another layer where then all of these sort of like symbols were sitting over the top of it. And I just thought it was so well crafted. Maybe it's right here. Maybe it's this one. So, this, so yeah, it looks like the it looks like um kind of like a, a children's book in the way this the uh the layouts are. Oh yeah. Really big, really big open layouts and big words, big word balloons, right? Yeah, and, uh, how, but then you know you how, get something in the in this kind of. How's that lettering done? Is that a is that a font? Yeah, that's a font. It's right? a font. It's a font. Yeah. I have a feeling yeah. though. It oh maybe yeah. I am. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm going to. I'm going to second guess that font because. Oh maybe. That it's big. It's big and it takes up a lot of room. You know, and uh, you know I think you can get away with smaller. Yeah, this is and, a uh, you know even I think this is like an eight by ten book, so right. Oh, here here's here's a good example of it, but where there's oh yeah, yeah. it's like you know it's like a it's not this was definitely not well, I can't say definitely, but it just feels like he just go ahead and then and, and created a second layer, um, where yeah, that, that, you know, that, just, it's that, just that, nice symbols and yeah. Oh, it's, I'll, I'll say I'll, I'll say one thing. The neon pink is a bit too much for me. Um, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's very, very bubblegum and sweet. It, But mm-hmm. I'll say this. It has this like real concentrated visual depth. And I think it's going to be one of these books where you, if you keep coming back to it, which I would love for our book to have, is that you find these nuanced things. You know, it's very much like, um, you know, like Skybong liquor, you know, that 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 type of thing where people are really getting into, um, you know, the details, the details. And, and it goes back to something else that I'm always bringing up, which is just this as a part of the world building. You know, obviously, Skybong is not a real liquor yet, but, um, you know, but it will be after after, <laughs> we this, can, after this hits the stands we're we could we could get into some private labeling but um you know i i just think it's such a uh uh, a cool thing to be giving that much more detail as you're saying and i want to kind of back up a lot of books nowadays getting released are big talky pieces with no backgrounds um and very little action in the action maybe like threads one piece to the next but once again like if you came into one of these books now i think a lot of people are doing these uh uh, buy an issue and it's a self-contained story but if you are attracted to the art and then the art just sort of like thumbs you through for 10 to 15 minutes the comic and you just spent five bucks on it or two dollars on a pdf download What's the use? What's the use? Like, I love books. My favorite books, which I'm going to be bringing a lot out, are books that I'm constantly going back to. Like, I don't feel like watching TV. I come up to this stack, and I'm like, I'm just going to, uh-huh. okay, I'll grab this, a, gr- a glass of wine, and I just sit there for like an hour or two. 
I mean, they're yeah. they're not they're not you know they're 150 200 page graphic novel types trade paperbacks, yeah. but they're that that's what it is. I mean, that's that's where it should be. Yeah, I mean. I mean, you need, we need, we want escapism and, you know, the view and the reader would love nothing more than to buy something that just takes you away out of your, you know, daily doldrums and, you know, and just puts you in a story and, um, you know, and, and the, the, these floppy comics are just, you know, for one thing, you turn the page. You're seeing, too, you know, too many pinups. I think I think I've made this complaint before. You're seeing too many pinups or pinup type poses. Yep. And 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 too many talking heads. And uh, and then you hit ads. You know, on on the Marvels and the DCs and everything. You really do just hit these ads, and it's just like, all right, now, you know, nobody pays any attention to the ads. They just flip the pages. I don't know. Maybe you know, do these ads do anything? Do they actually drive sales? You know, some of these ads are big name companies selling like, you know, junk food like Skittles or, you know, or they're they're uh, hyping some movie or something. But I don't know if it really pays to advertise in comic books, you know, um, you know, other than the other than the, uh, you know, giant, you know, uh, life size Frankenstein doll for 50 cents. <laughs> that yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but uh, all right, but there are ads, and you know, our comic has no ads. Our comic has more pages. You know, of in in a floppy edition, right? We're we're doing twenty eight pages of of story in a in a in a single comic book. You know, and no ads, and then we'll just have like some some cool pages in the end. Where it'll be like maybe some prose or some you know articles from leading up to the world, you know that you're in or pinups or roughs or something. I don't know if I want to do roughs, um, but yeah, you know that for the I, trade paperback. Actually, we'll extra. Yeah, you know, either there's so many extras. Like Page if you're at a con, yeah, if you're on a con and you you you're you're hanging out with some other artists. You draw each other's characters, and then you put those in the back of your books as extras, just to have, you know, an, another take on the character from a different artist's perspective. That's always fun. Mm -hmm. Or, or just do bonus stuff. You know, like some sometimes you, uh, you know, you're you're getting the the comic ready to send off to the printer, and you know, you had a couple of people read it, and they're like, "Well, how did this happen? How did this get there? How did that get there?" So you you know you might have these little like fill in uh, you know things. I mean I might have like these fake articles that I make from newspapers or science magazines or you know some publication of the day that is going to explain how the world got this way. You know, and it's all good because you know, the Watchmen had lots lots of stuff like that, and uh, I think a lot of comics have had uh, graphic novels have had stuff like that where there's a couple of pages of text or prose, you know, in some format, in some, you know, graphic art format where it carries the story along. But if a reader doesn't want to read a page of text, they just skip, you know, they skip it, go to the next page. So, you know, it could be an in infographic, it could be a listicle, it could be like all these different things that you can do, you know, just to add value. But, you know, you're only talking about an, another four pages because we're doing 32 plus four uh, and we're going to print and the 32 is the 28, you know, story pages, action packed, and then four pages of, of, you know, this other kind of filler stuff. And then the four is the front cover, inside front cover and back cover and inside back cover. So, you know, that's it. We got a formula and we're sticking to it. And, um, and we don't have, you know, it's it's designed to get a reader, you know, hopefully get into the story, take your attention, and then, you know, out of the real world into the story. And, uh, you know, that's what I think comics should do, Marvel and DC Comics should do more of, and, and Image and Dark Horse and all those guys, whoever, you know, whoever has that, like, are you really getting anything out of those ads? Are they really like making money? Does it justify the ads? Do they have salespeople? I mean, you know, how does that? How does the business side of that work? I wonder. 
Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is, you know, um, comic books anywhere beyond indie self-publishing. The comic book is a piece of advertising material as it is. So I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out in the wash at some point where, you know, uh, you know, they're just being paid outwardly to ha hold those uh, um, advertisements for the movie, the, the television right. series on Disney, the, you know, the so on and so forth. Um, and it's just you know, the same exact ad in every comic that comes yeah. out that month, month, yeah. right? So there's like a monthly you know, ads, maybe like, I don't know, eight, 10 pages of ads, right? That they yeah. say, all right, we're, we're going to have Starburst fruit juice here. And we're going to have, you know, this one there. And then of course there, there are also promoing, you know, uh, all their other comics mm -hmm. and that's, that's fine. But I would do that all at the end of the book. So you're not taking people out of the story, you know? Yeah. Well, it seems I think one of the hardest parts, and, and I've heard this from many a many a collector, let's say, um, they'll they'll get they'll they'll get a hold of your um, um, your floppy, but they'll get it as a PDF, and then once they you you have completed, um, you know, let's say it's a six issue book uh, storyline, they and then you do a Indiegogo or Kickstarter or whatever. Um, they're they're then they're just as happy to put fifty to seventy five dollars down for your uh, you know your big book your your story and then that's how they add it to their collection um, right and so I I you know I feel like we're on uh, you know a, a level where we need to be um, conscientious about just getting viewership um where it's you know they get the opportunity to to um to see the to, to read the whole entire story online for really nothing um you know which i know it can be a controversial thing um but if you have the consistency in your behavior that you're going to bring this to some place and people are excited you know when it gets out to a point uh and you say hey you know here's my new stories but you know I'm looking for some from some dollar support now. You'll most right. definitely get I mean, it. I mean, you know, you'll, you'll, every, you'll everything get it. we just said. Yeah, everything we just said would would go out the window if somebody offered us some cash and say, "Hey, can I put a, a full page ad in your comic?" And here's a whole bunch of cash. I, I think we would just retract everything we just said. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, but I I I would really you know hate to just put it in the middle of the story you know i don't know about that you well know, that's if, prime that's prime real estate and advertising because they're the the uh the yeah so i think is there i think if the money is good um then you do inside front cover or inside back cover you know sure. yeah yeah but uh you know they, these are the things that you know you have all the flexibility in the world if you're the publisher the creator you can do whatever you want and if you can get some kind of advertising like you know maybe you're not going to be you know plugged into the corporate world and and you know be able to do you know what marvel and dc do because they have it's systematized and they have built in audiences and track records. Uh, but maybe you get like, you know, a friend's comic and maybe you trade a page in, in your comic so they could promo their comic. Um, yeah. You know, certain, certainly if you're, if you're putting anything else out, you, uh, you know, you get a page advert or, uh, or, you know, a panel advertising that. And, um, you know, your, uh, your publisher might have some thoughts, you know, to, that they want to put on the page um you know like a like a stand soapbox type of thing and you know there's there's definitely room for that but um you know i uh i think you know when you get into a story i mean you don't want you don't want it to be too long right you have to have these kind of like chapter breaks right so you know we're we're doing the flashbacks you know to go in and out of these sequences and, you know, so if, you know, someone's got to go take a leak, you know, you have like a good place to put the, the thing down or if you want to go get, a, you know, your drink or whatever. But, um, 
you know, it, it should be immersive, you know? I mean, how many times have you been in Barnes & Noble flipping through something and it really caught your attention and then the next, next thing you know, you just stood up there leaning against the sh- book rack and you read the entire freaking thing, right? Because it just took you away. And, you know, that's that's what a good comic can do, you know? And you're like, well, I don't need to buy it now. I just read the whole thing here. And that goes um, back to what I was saying is that, you know, we're a visual based art form where, you know, the best books are working hand in hand with words. Um, so it, it, I can't I I can barely remember standing in a Borders or a Barnes and Noble. Um, but uh, it, if it's that good. um and they're and and they're speaking to to me as a as a collector based on genre. Um, even if I did or do or had read it standing there at at a Barnes and Noble, I most definitely would buy it. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. If you, if, if I mean, you know, if you're a collector and you see something's good, you want to own it and and you know put it, you know, something valuable in your collection but if you're just a kid you know or you you don't have the money like i you know i'm thinking back to i mean i have a confession (laughs) i you're gonna laugh you know the uh the trilogy you know uh the uh lord of the rings yeah so i i I got a copy of the twin uh, the the fellowship of the rings and i read it uh i got that from school and and all that but um, I didn't have a copy of the next book, so I go into um, the, a bookstore near where my mom lived because I was staying with her for the summer, and I read the whole Twin Towers <laughs> leaning against the book rack. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't try to offer you a job at least at, that, at like week one. <laughs> the no, that it, it, it was the good old days where they didn't say, hey, kid, you're going to buy that. I mean, I just melted into the furniture, to the wall. And, you know, <laughs> I, I remember I remember because they had they had a decent uh, comic section. And I remember seeing, you know, uh, Star Reach comics. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and then I was like really getting into those stories. And I said, wow, I want to go home and draw some yep. spaceships. Oh, yep. that made, made me want to draw some spaceships. What was the guy, Mark Fridrich or something? Or Ugh, I can't remember. the uh, <clears throat> Star Reach? Yeah. So it was like uh, that was you know real indie stuff back then, and uh, you know this this was downtown Manhattan. This was the Soho area. So I read all of the Twin Towers like that, and never bought a copy. And and um, and then you're gonna say, well, what about the third book? Right? I'm sure everybody's asking. You got it for Christmas. I, I I never I never read the third book for ten years. Oh, ten okay. years. Okay. I purpose I purposely did not read the third book because I wanted to savor it and and always have it to read in my future. And then I finally read it when uh, I guess I couldn't take it anymore. I just you know and the ending and everything and I. And I cried and all that good stuff. But uh, you know, I w- w- I'm like that, right? I have I have books that I'm enjoying, and then I just stop right in the middle because I want to savor it, and I really want to enjoy it when I like you know summer vacation or something, you know, or or I'm traveling and I you know I really want to be in a cool headspace. Um, and so that's what I'm doing right now with the uh, the Marvel Comics book, which I'll show the audience right here. <clears throat> uh, this book, this book really got me, uh, Marvel Comics by Sean Howe. I got this for free from a friend, and uh, it doesn't have the cover, so I don't know what the cover looks like. But uh, you start reading this, and it's a really great history of Marvel Comics you know, really just the Stan Lee era, you know, not like the whole Martin Goodman thing from before. And this is just so good. It brings you through this year by year. And I got into like the 70s 
and I stopped <laughs> because I'm like, oh, wow, this book is too good. And I don't even know what happens. Like, I think I'm into like 1973, 1974. And I just said, all right, I want to finish this some other time because it's too good. I don't want to, I don't want to like ruin it all right now. I want to enjoy it. But, um, you know, I don't know that. I know that's weird. Most people just gobble, you know, the whole thing up. Hey, this is good. I read it in, in a couple of hours. You know, this is good. I read it all in two days. You know, I understand that I'm weird. Yeah. But the whole standing around thing actually brought me back to pre COVID. <laughs> um, libraries um my wife and i are library people um mainly because it's there and you can check it out and you can go and sit down and read it or just check it like literally check it out and take it home um so everything from um not only like books but um dvds when we had a, D- a dvd player um mm-hmm. but uh that is, I think, of a, a, a let's say, let's call it an important place for comics to be uh, found and read. Um, and so, I know at the, the Gardner Francis Fox Library, I started looking into um, how you sell books to libraries. Um, and I actually had an acquaintance that's a librarian, so I reached out to her. And she she said and verified what I had been reading, which is you send the librarian, you know, some material about your book. Um, and if it meets that librarian's uh, needs. Muster, yeah. Well, it's needs. I mean, because they're, they're not, uh, well, I can't speak for all librarians, but, um, you know, they, they have, if people are coming up day and night, you know, do you have do you have this kind of book? You have this kind of book. You have you have comic yeah. books. You have comic books. I want to read a comic book. Can you re- suggest a comic book? Um, you know, but you know the obviously if you have a YA book, um, you know you're you're going to get a lot more attention than uh, you know something that has uh, boobies hmm. um, right. and explicit violence. But you know it it's still something to be said. Uh, um, in how people are getting to uh, your 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 comic book, right? They're uh, they're getting exposed to it one way or the other. Library yeah. libraries are, are cool. I remember killing time in libraries, and before I had kids, I could just go in and, and uh, you know do a whole day. I mean, you know what I used to do in libraries because. You know, I I am in schools a lot, so that you know you have your school library, which are which are sometimes very limited. But then, <clears throat> college libraries are interesting, you know, because they have uh, research material, you know. And if you're if you're into art, you know, they have all kinds of art books and art history books and stuff. But what I used to do is, um, I mean, <clears throat> in New York, you know, we we really take advantage of Barnes and Nobles, you know reading policy they just let you sit there and read they have chairs you know and uh so that's nice you know they're they're trying to sell you i guess coffee or whatever but oh, yeah. <clears throat> um libraries i used to go and and uh oh you know find uh some some books of the masters like literally like leonardo and michelangelo and all that and then just sit there and copy their hands like the way that you, they drew hands and <laughs> that's what I used to do in libraries and just yeah. and then you know I would I would always do the thing you know where you're going through the the shelves and you're picking out stuff and you bite off way more than you can chew right you ever do that yeah it's like you you come back and you've got like 16 books and then your wife says what the hell are you thinking and then you're like all right <laughs> and, and uh you know you might get you might get through like six or seven of them you know but uh yeah. Yeah, that that's it's all good stuff. Um, With and- that being said, I do have to interrupt and say we're coming up on our forty-five minute mark. We're trying to keep these episodes bite size, uh, mm-hmm. so um, but we've got a good tangent going on here. So we'll probably pick up where uh, we're leaving off right now in our next episode, which is uh, I guess thematically, how do you go about 
finding comic books, reading them, and becoming a fan and even a collector. So yeah, um, and and I I'm just a teaser. I also I have, I have a treasury edition of Simon Kirby that I'm going to show that uh, I bet nobody has seen this this uh, early early uh, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon stuff before. So we're gonna. Show a little bit of that and uh, cool. and talk talk about the evolution. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Well, I say thank you for stopping by and listening all the way up to this point. If you have, um, of course, um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Um, and we are doing this every week. We're posting a new episode at eleven o'clock in the morning Eastern time, and we are for real. Uh, summer is on and uh we're 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 getting down so with that i say goodbye until next time sayonara